So now we've figured out exactly which style of release and which, which, which exact release it is that we want to use. I figure it's a good time to you know, sit down and actually talk about the execution of the release, right? Yeah, I think bearing in mind, execution is the most important part of the shot. If you don't have anything else and you've got execution, it can get you a long ways. Bearing in mind the opposite is true. If you don't have execution and you have everything else, it's going to be pretty evident pretty quick to everyone else out there on the field that you just don't have it. Most definitely. I think that from the experience I've had in world championships and high-level U.S. tournaments, you, you see people with terrible form, but if they've got that execution section down, then they, you know, they can still win massive tournaments and perform really great. So it's, it's key that you know, th this, this section really gets across to the viewer, I think, Dave. Yeah? Absolutely, 100%. And, and the thing that I think we need to kind of define is how we execute. And, and the terms that we use, because I'm really sure that we're onto something that's completely different than anything else out there. I would say so. And I think a term that you kind of hear, you know, in the magazines, in the archery field, whether it be down at the local club, all the way up to the world championships, you hear people talking about this term, back tension. Oh, back tension is a classic, isn't it? You read about it at the online forums and the magazines and stuff, and it seems that for every person out there, uh, you know, with an opinion about back tension, they're all quite different. If you ask 10 people in a room, I think you'd probably get 10 different answers. Yeah, most probably. I mean, it's such a, it seems like such a, a, a broad area. I mean, your back is, is massive and this, this tension, I mean, it, it's, it's just, a, it seems like a bizarre concept almost to me. It's, it's, it's confused me right from the onset when I, when I started archery and started to learn to shoot properly and stuff. So I, over the years, I've kind of developed and evolved this technique that I've, I've given a very specific term to, and that term is scapula motion. Now, what I've just done right there is I've nailed down two very specific points. Number one, the scapula, which is this very specific part of your back of your body, right? And motion. Number two, the task I'm trying to carry out with that specific part of my body. You know, so most of my seminars and coaching sessions around the world when I have these clinics, we do take that quiz, we say back tension. Can anybody tell me what it is? And we'll get four, five, six, maybe 10 different answers. But when I throw the term scapula motion out there and offer no explanation just initially, everyone in the room almost immediately gets it. Scapula, shoulder blade, motion, move. It's, it's very, very easy to, uh, to explain when you look at it like that. Definitely, and I would agree. I mean, it seems to me like that's a, it's something that you're able to do. It's something that you're able to understand and that you're able to carry that out without, without too much difficulty. And there's, there's an, in my mind, when you say those words, there's not a lot of confusion about what you mean, really. No, it's, it's pretty clear and concise definition, no doubt. Okay, Dave, so we've got the chairs cleared out of the way. And now it's, it's time to demonstrate to the guys at home you know, exactly what we mean by scapular motion and how we achieve this in our shot execution. Yeah, I've got three different exercises, range of motion type of stuff I want to run through with you and everybody watching at home to help better identify this. I think that probably the best thing to do is to give them a view from the front and from the back simultaneously. So if you could, Liam, just have you turn around and uh, I'll face front. And the first thing we're going to do is everyone get their arms parallel to the floor, elbows up there kind of nice and high, nice and even. And then I want to take and make a fist with each hand, put them in the middle of your chest, and just rotation at the shoulder. Take and move your elbows back around behind you. Everyone kind of feel that on both sides of your spine. Just slight pressure. I don't want anyone to bounce or have too much range of motion in there because I don't want anyone to injure themselves while they're trying to learn this new exercise. You kind of feel that on both sides, Liam? Yeah, yeah? for sure. Let's everyone put their bow arms down at their side, bring their release arm back around to the front, and now once again, with just rotation at the shoulder, Liam, let's bring that right back around. Now, Liam, did that get a little harder to feel or easier to feel? Oh, harder, I'd say, because you can't, you can't pull the two blades together then. Exactly, because the front one needs to stay out where it is, and the back one's the one that needs to come around. Go ahead and let's everybody put the release arm back down at the side. Now, the next exercise we're going to do is going to play into a little bit of elbow height. You know, this might get a little trickier to feel yet because everyone's put together a little bit different and different elbow heights are required for this next one. So the next one, Liam, let's do the hand flat against the chest and everyone watching at home. And I want you to get the feeling that your, your hand is being pushed straight directly through your chest without rotation at the shoulder, just with your hand pushing straight on your chest. How's that feeling now, Liam? It's, um, it's much more difficult to much achieve. Much more difficult. Let's take a look at your range of motion, how you're doing there. 
Now Liam here, here's his shoulder blade, and he's definitely got motion to it. It's moving in towards his spine, it's moving in the right direction. Now, the next one I want to do actually incorporates elbow height a little bit more and starts to actually simulate somewhat of a shot. On this next one, I'd have everybody stand as if they were addressing a target, turning their head to the target, bringing their release hand up high, dropping it down through the draw, and as they draw and climb in, load up that scapula. Try to load up that muscle, that one hot spot we were feeling when we went through the different exercises. This will get a little bit more difficult. Now the next thing we need to touch on is loading. When do we apply this? When does this come on? Okay, Dave, so hopefully we've, you know, we've displayed to the guys at home the, the exercises that they've got to go through in order to you know, work the correct uh, area of the scapula. Activate that scapula. Yeah, that we've been yeah, talking motion, about. Yeah. So what we've actually prepared now is a, uh, a short video clip of, of your scapula working you know, with a more fitted shirt on so we can actually see the muscle movement. And if we watch this now, we can actually see how the shoulder blade comes down as it settles in and then moves round, closing in towards the spine. We can actually see that's the correct way there. Yeah, actually, and what you see there in that clip, Liam, is what we like to call loading. You'll see in the clip that the, the scapula actually comes in, has quite a broad range of movement to it, moves in extremely close to the spine, and as I come into my anchor, it seems to settle off a little bit. I try to look at that, uh, that term, that loading, as, as an essential part of it, because a lot of people ask, you know, when do I engage the scapula? When do I start to pull through my shot or build tension? When do I start to activation? And most people commonly think it's when you draw back, settle your sight on the target, looking through your peep. When you're happy and content with the sight picture you see, most people will then try to apply that. Well, what, I mean, can, you know, what happens then when you start well, to put that on? It's, it seems to me whenever you start to engage that, that the scapula and, and the pull, if, you, if that's what you want to call it, it seems that this unsettles the back end of the shot, which in turn unsettles the front end. So just as you've got it to hold still and, and stop in the middle, it then you disrupt that and the, the dot wobbles and then you stop the engagement of the shot and then you go back forwards to, to settle it down. And it, it's a vicious circle I and think it, that's it never what, stops. Yeah. So what we're looking for here is a, is a way around that, a way where we can achieve this scapular motion, but we can keep our dots steady and able to execute on the center. And truly, the only way to do that is obviously to engage the scapula, to engage the pull, to start to work to shoot the shot right from the very time that you put tension on the bowstring. As you can see in the clip, you know, right from the time I put tension on the bowstring, come up, drop down into my anchor, that scapula is loading, the tension's building, the motion is already there. It's almost as if uh, I look at my shot sometimes with a dial on it. And just as an analogy, that dial has to go all the way to 10 for the shot to fire. Well, what I do before I even climb into the anchor is I teach my body and teach my mind to come in there and load that dial, load that power up to like 11 or 12, way beyond what I know is the breaking point of my shot. And then as I climb into the anchor and settle in there and my sight becomes steady in the center, that, that dial backs off to like 9.9, 9.8, right on the hairy edge of execution. Then my body knows how to go to 11 or 12. It's come in there, it's loaded up, it's backed off to 9.9, 9.8, right on the edge. The dot is steady, there's very little movement in the shot, and the continual loading of that motion continues to go through and the shot breaks while the dot's still good and steady and strong and in the middle. Yeah, I think the, the way I've always looked at that myself as a shooter is what I kind of like to call, to call preload, you know. I like, to, I like to pull back and I like to almost overload the shot and as you say, take that dial past 10 all the way down and in and then it comes back on itself. And you can actually see that on uh, the point of the arrow as it works all the way back through the bow and then it will creep forward ever so slightly and you can see that in the movement in your shoulder blade in the clip that we looked at earlier, right? Yeah, and we'll take time right now to look at another clip and look at that arrow point movement on the rest like you talked about. So we can see from the clip here that actually as the point of the arrow moves back, it reaches its, its uh, like the, the end. The 11 or yeah. 12. The 11 the or 12. The maximum loading, yeah. You can see then as it creeps forward slightly to 9.9 .9 on our dial, we can then see it almost holds perfectly still until the arrow eventually fires and goes off. Now that we've given a thorough explanation of what it is we do with the back half of the shot regarding scapular motion and loading before the shot, I'd like to now take some time and discuss what it is we do with the front of the shot. 
Well, you're exactly right, Dave. I think the, the, the front shoulder and the whole front arm is, it plays a massively important part to actually being able to execute the shot correctly and achieve this shooting form that we're talking about. Now, for me, I like to think of my front shoulder as being solid. You know, it's nice, it's down, it's, f it's flat with the other shoulder. You know, it's good upper body positioning like we were talking about earlier. And this creates the foundation for my entire shot. This creates a solid bone on bone structure for the grip to push against. It also creates something for me to move that back scapula in towards. And basically, it, you know, it is the foundation of the whole shot for me. Now you mentioned one word there in that explanation that I want to kind of touch on because it's been been utilized in a lot of explanations and form before and it's something that we, neither one of us, really believe in or utilize. And that's, you mentioned the word push. And I know for me that's something I've always tried to stay away from because I think then you get breaking down the shot into too many factors. You know, am I pushing and pulling? You know, if so, is there a relationship or a ratio between those? And, and that's something I really want to stay away from. The last thing I want people doing during the shot is thinking about, you know, is it 50-50, is it 60-40, is it 70-30? That's one thing that I think kind of pollutes the whole shot process. Well, for me personally, I, I would totally agree. It's, um, I don't think it can be put into percentages. If anything, I feel like that the front half is, is solid and that is just a, a tool which the back scapula is using to move against, you know? So the front would be dynamic uh, in my shot, and I use it to add strength to the shot. I don't actually think of it as a push, nor do I term it as a push. I use that strength to kind of bail me out of some situations, or to also help me get my shot back on track. Definitely. We all know that feeling when the dot's holding a little bit low on one of those oh, days that you're man. a bit tired, huh? It's every day that ends in Y, I tell you. <laughs> 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 yeah, so for me personally, you know, I can increase that strength in the front side of my shot and that will sometimes just be enough to bring that dot back up to the center in order for me to execute the perfect shot on the middle. Or sometimes help you find your rhythm again too, which is very important. Definitely, definitely.